Many people think about starting a YouTube or a Twitch career, but they have no idea where to start. I am Oliver and I have been a full-time YouTube and Twitch content creator for over two and a half years now. And today I want to show you what you need and how to set everything up. So let's get started. I want to show you the basic principle before we get into the hands-on part. Imagine you are a content creator and you want to reach an audience over the internet, but you have no idea how. So I want to show you what you technically need. First things first, you need a computer because that is basically the mainframe of your setup. Also, you need a webcam and a microphone because you want to somehow express yourself. And then of course, gameplay material. Although. You don't necessarily need a high-end microphone if you have a good headset that has a built-in microphone. Don't invest money yet if it's not needed. Also, you need a software called OBS or Open Broadcaster Software. And that thing basically picks up all the signals and merges them together into a single signal, basically encoding it, sending it over to the platform called Twitch. That is a very important thing here. I'm gonna talk about that later. It sends it over the internet and that might be a bottleneck for you. After that, Twitch then takes your signal and presents it to the audience on the stream. You could also record with OBS and put the content on other platforms, for example, on YouTube. And then your audience can access your content from the YouTube platform. So that's the basic principle of how live stream works and what you need. As I was saying, having a camera and a microphone is extremely crucial. I think Twitch is a platform that draws the audience towards the streamer. I think it's not mostly about the gameplay. It is more about making a connection to other people, seeing what the streamer is doing, seeing him react to what is going on there. And um, yeah, again, building that connection and being interactive with the people. You don't have to have high-end equipment if you're just starting out streaming. That's super important, guys. Just use the stuff that you have lying around. Use a cheap old webcam or use your laptop webcam if you have one or use the microphone from your, from your headset. That is all just enough, guys. And if streaming is something for you, if you have made your first steps and you want to invest later, that's perfectly fine. But just make your experience first and then grow from there. Super important. Alrighty guys, now that we got that out of the way, let's go over here because I have prepared the OBS Studio website. That is the website where you can get um, OBS Studio. That is the software that I'm using and that actually a lot of streamers are using to uh, broadcast their live streams to the internet. And as you can see, you can download OBS here based on your operating system. System. So I'm gonna download it for Windows. The download starts like that, as you can see. And I have definitely not made any test downloads earlier. But yeah, just install it and then it would look very much like this here. That is OBS Studio in a completely blank installation. And I'm gonna show you now how to set it up and how to install everything. OBS works with scenes and sources and a scene is basically a collection of sources which uh, in return are your gameplay material, your camera, overlays or any kind of alert boxes that you add to the scene. And then the scene will be transferred over to Twitch and this is basically what your users will see. So we're gonna set up our first scene and for the sake of an um, example, I'm gonna rename that thing uh, Twitch Streaming for example. And to that scene, we're gonna add the first source, which is gonna be a game capture. I have a game running in the background, which is called Mac Warrior Online, and I'm gonna just rename it like that. Uh, name it like that, actually, because you can name the sources whatever you like. You can be super creative with that if you wanna get a bigger overview. And then you go from mode capture any full screen application to mode capture specific window. And that window is gonna be my game in the background. And as you can see, it is already picking up our gameplay. That is super cool. So if I go into the game and I uh, whittle around here, then you can see this is actually picking up the signal already pretty nicely. But as I was saying, I want to get my camera on top of that. So how do I do that? I'm gonna add another source. And here we go with video capture device. That is my main cam. Quick side note, you can have multiple cams if you like. And we're gonna click OK here and here you can see me already. That is my cam link that is already picking up the signal and I don't need to do anything anymore. If the camera is not working, you might need to choose it from a list here, but it's the default thing, so we're gonna go over here. You see the problem? My face is now overlaying the gameplay, which uh, might be interesting if you wanna do some IRL streams, but I wanna set up a game stream, so we're gonna just drag those little handles up here all the way down there and scale me down to, um, to a good scale. Also, if you hit the Alt key while dragging, you can crop the image 
And if you hit the shift key, you can stretch the image, but I don't want that right now. So I want to be, I would say like that. And we're gonna set us like all over here into the bottom left corner. The problem is sometimes when you're dragging something around, it might be that you are dragging it out of position. But the good thing is that you can actually lock your stuff. For example, the gameplay in the background that should be fixed all the time. Click the little lock icon and then you cannot drag it around anymore. You cannot destroy your scene. And again, that is the signal that the people are getting now. That is what you broadcast to Twitch, technically. We are not broadcasting yet, but we will do it in a second. If you want another scene, for example, the talk scene, you can just add it. And here it is. It is blank again. You just add your video capture device again and here is an interesting thing we already taught OBS that there is something like a, a cam link that is established and we can use the same thing to add it here again and whenever you edit this source it will be um, it will be edited it will be changed over all of your scenes that means um, if you have your camera set up in a specific way uh, with a specific filter on top of it and you edit it in, in this specific source here, then it will be uh, changed over all of your scenes and you don't have to worry. That's pretty cool. If you don't want that, you have to add another scene, an uh, sorry, another source again to uh, specify a difference there. But yeah, cool. I can switch between the scenes now and um, I can also add something like another scene that I call intro. A lot of people are doing that. And here we're just gonna add an image that could be your your intro background. For example, I have nothing prepared right now. Let's go over to this here, uh, Twitch overlay. Let's go ahead and that's animations. Give me a second. Here's the render, exactly. So that could be your intro screen and then you can add some text on top of that. Uh, like this here, this is the intro text and you can get super creative with that. Say stream is starting soon. I don't want to dive too deep into this right now, but um, you get the notion, you get the point here. You can scale it up, although I would recommend, I would really recommend uh, not scaling it because you can see this is uh, very pixelated now, but instead just go back to properties and make the font just bigger like that. Okay, there we go. Good. Now we have an intro, a talk and the Twitch streaming scene. And again, this is everything you need for your first live stream. What you also need is a connection to Twitch. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. In order to get started, we're gonna bring up the settings because that is where the magic happens. And we're gonna start by going to the stream tab here because this lets you select the platform that you wanna stream to. You can select from Twitch, YouTube, Mixer and a broad variety of platforms that you wanna stream to. And now basically we have two options. Option number one is connecting your account to OBS so that it has a direct connection to Twitch. And option number two, which is a bit of a legacy option here, but I wanna show it uh, as an example because it's not that intuitive is using your stream key. Your stream key is basically a big hash of data which um, authenticates your account to Twitch. And then if you broadcast from OBS to Twitch, Twitch will recognize you and then pushes the signal over to your channel. So in order to get there, we go over to Twitch, we go over to our creator dashboard that we have with our account and then go down to channel. And here you can see at the very top of the first page, you get your primary stream key. It is very important though, it is very important that you never ever show that stream key to anybody because if that thing gets leaked, anybody could install OBS or any streaming platform and then use your key to broadcast to your channel and then put anything on there um, that they like. So be super careful with that. We're gonna just use the copy function here and then we go back to OBS and paste it here so that nobody sees my credential. And that is already it. We're gonna apply and we are technically ready to stream. However, we should probably talk about encoding a little bit because that determines the quality of your stream. And here is a very big and also limiting factor in two ways. That is the bitrate. The bitrate is super important. It basically tells the tells the CPU or the GPU how many bits you want to how many bits you want to send over to Twitch. And the more bits, the more data you put over there, the better the image quality will be. I would recommend going for something like 2.5K to 3,500. So 2,500 to 3,500 if you want to start out. Again, the thing is, those bits have to be pushed over 
the internet to Twitch. And if you have a really bad connection, it could be that you need to lower your bitrate in order to get a good signal, a good and stable signal over to Twitch. And that might then again result in a lower quality, but it's better than having a choppy signal that cuts out every few seconds. That is not very enjoyable. However, you should also not go too low on the bitrate because then there are a lot of artifacts and there's a lot of pixelation on your screen. And it is also not that enjoyable to watch anymore. So find your perfect balance and um, see how it goes. There's also two more things. Actually, it's one more thing with two options here, and that is the encoder. Uh, it is basically, uh, basically you have two options depending on your setup. Um, the X264 is basically using your CPU, your processor which could be a bit of a problem because a lot of games are very CPU hungry and if you put a lot of strain on your CPU encoding your signal here in OBS, then there wouldn't be so many resources left over anymore for your gameplay, which makes it laggy then, makes the gameplay laggy, um, but the viewers would get a good quality on their stream. And here again, the higher the bitrate, the more strain on your CPU. You can balance that a little bit with this setting here, CPU usage preset. It is set to very fast or it goes from ultra fast to very slow. And that basically determines the amount of resources that your CPU gets for encoding. It basically says something like, hey, you don't have much time to encode a single frame, so you have to do it ultra fast, which is very sloppy. Or you give the CPU more time, which is, hey, you get all the time in the world and you can make the best quality image ever. It's basically um, like drawing a sketch in 10 seconds or a full minute, just as a, you know, as a, re as a reference here. But I would, I would say go for something like fast or... I don't know, something between ultra fast and fast. It highly depends on the power of your CPU uh, to fiddle around with that. So go to 3.5k bitrate again and then uh, try to be in the upper half and see what's coming out on the other end by just monitoring your Twitch. The other thing is the good old NVENC and it's not the good old but it's the good new NVENC encoder. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card you can, um, you can go for your GPU instead of the CPU and the GPU is way better at encoding and it doesn't take so many resources from your system. Um, if you have the NVENC encoder just go with it, it is perfect, it is good. Um, you won't have that many or that much impact and strain on your own system with that and uh, just fiddle around with the settings, with the bitrate. Again, the biggest bottlenecks are your internet connection and then the power of your own PC, uh, either the graphics card or the CPU. And that is it. And that is basically what we need. So I'm gonna go over to, let's say 3.5K here. I think this should be enough. You can leave the audio settings as they are. You can leave the video settings as they are. But here, there's another like little little gear that you can you can uh, tweak your uh, your quality and your performance with. You can technically scale down your video from um, 1080p to 720p, for example. That makes it so that with the same bitrate you have less data because your image is smaller and that means the image should be a little bit crisper so if you don't mind streaming in 720p just scale it down like that and you should be good to go another little screw that you can just uh, can you turn here is the the fps values that means the fewer frames the better it is for the encoder because the fewer frames it has to render per second so again that is a thing that you can do but i'm gonna keep it at 60 here because i'm quite confident so let's try we're gonna go to 720p hardware encoding with the gpu we have our stream key set up and if i press start streaming now i should get a signal over on my twitch account so let's see that should look very much like this dashboard live there we go press the play button and it takes a while usually give me a second is it not coming there we go we have zero viewers now and here is my signal so if i go over to twitch tv slash rabadool that is my account you can see the signal is coming and here i am with a little bit of lag and delay but the image looks good and basically that is all you need to set up and you're ready to go I hope I got you a good overview on how to start your first live stream. And if you found that video helpful, it would be very much appreciated if you would leave a like and subscribe to the channel because there is more content to come. I also want to cover the business side of the whole live stream endeavor. And if you are interested in that, leave a sub here and I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.